Hello and welcome to our second installment of the Braille Trail Reader from APH. And again, we're going to, in this tutorial, go through the menus and the settings. In the previous one, we looked at orientation to the unit. Just an FYI, I did put the case back on this time because we don't need to like be turning the unit to show various things. So I just put the case back on. So if you are uh, partially sighted or sighted or you know, can see the screen at all, then you might notice that it looks a little different and that's why. So in order to get started, we're gonna have to turn the unit on, right? So if you remember, the power button is on the left side of the unit and it's the part of the unit that is facing away from you. So I'm gonna hold that in for about three seconds. Now while I'm holding it in, I'm going to put my finger on the braille because if I have a hearing loss or if I just don't hear that beep, uh, I can find out that it's turned on by feeling that the braille has popped. So let's go ahead and hold that button in and listen for that beep, feel for the braille. Yep, there we go. And it says starting right on the braille uh, screen. So, uh, yep, and then it only stays there about maybe three to five seconds and then you are redirected to the clock, which is part of the menu area. So that is how you turn it on and, and this is the clock. Now remember, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the clock maybe later. So, okay, the next thing we need to look, about, look at is how do we navigate the menus? Well, if you want to get between items in the menu, you can use either your um, outer left and right thumb keys to go to the previous or next item, or you can also use the um, left and right joystick. So the outer thumb keys or the left and right joystick, okay? You enter a menu by uh, doing the joystick uh, down. You can enter that menu. Uh, you can use the enter key to get into the menu, which is dot eight, of course, or space, or if you have a disengaged, you didn't have enough ways, you could touch the cursor routing sensor above the uh, above the name of what you want to, to add, open. Okay, and uh, once you're in that menu, of course you need to navigate it. Um, like we talked about, um, you can do your left and right or inner thumb keys or your up and down joystick. Now, I, I find that very confusing myself. If you're using um, left and right to go choose a menu item but you're using up and down to option to navigate the options within it that's i suppose one way to, to look at it there's also trial and error because i'm sure what will happen to you has happened to me you can't remember which one was which and there you have it to exit the menu you can use the joystick up or the escape shortcut which um, is a space with the letter e or dots one and five you can um, also, I believe, um, hit the uh, backspace to get out of there, but it doesn't say that here, so I could be wrong. Um, another thing just to keep in mind, it's really kind of cool that you can do first letter navigations within the, uh, the longer menu if you know what option starts with that you want. So you can do that as a quick way to jump among the items and that'll probably be be most useful when you uh, get to using the notes feature and are naming your own files um, it's a lot more efficient way to navigate um, another thing to know is that if you do from anywhere in the uh, applications mode which is it which is what it's in now if you do anywhere from there if you do a space with that's one two three four five six or we used to call that chord with a full cell combination that will jump you back to the main menu if again you are in applications mode and that main menu it'll pop you back to the top which is going to be the clock which may or may not be correct depending on how you um, handled that earlier whether you synced yet with your phone okay so types of menus there are three types and it's important to know the difference so we have a read only menu that, that means that the system is providing you with information that can't be changed. That would be things like, oh, let's see, um, the battery power, I suppose, and the clock. 
and maybe even you know about like the version number and stuff of the software you can't change that so your the the uh, system is just giving you information there is the second type of menu is a toggle um, that means that you're turning something on or off um, or enabling or disabling it um, and you can use your toggle settings by using your inner or left and right thumb keys I believe you may also use your up and down uh, joystick as well but that could be incorrect I don't know but definitely you can use those inner thumb keys there are also the uh, excuse me there's also a third option a choice it's called the list of course so it's good for choosing one um, one item so you can you know navigate that list like we talked about with first letter navigation we can do um, our left and right pan uh, key inner thumb key panning keys or um, we can probably do our or our sensor if that is the option that's showing so there we go so what I'm going to do now is I turn the unit on I believe and I just need to wake it up again and I just press the key just to wake it up so I pressed my um, inner thumb keys just because the braille display had fallen asleep while I wasn't touching it. Makes sense. So what I'm going to do is, because now I'm not really sure where I am, for example, I'm going to do a hoard with a full cell, so space, with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and now I am at the time for sure. And now I can navigate these menus in the way I choose. I typically choose myself anyway to use the uh, previous and next thumb keys. So I'm going to press that next thumb key. And uh, as we, um, the first thing we were focused on was the clock and I had not synced that. So the time was incorrect. So just so that you're aware, the second menu item is notes and we'll get to talking about notes later. We're not actually going to go into notes, but we'll talk about it. I promise. But this is just an FYI of where it is. So we're going to do the next uh, thumb key again and we have battery. If I wanted to check that, I could just do, oops, yeah, that looked funny. Um, I'm gonna do a cursor routing key above it, just for fun, and it says I'm at 92%, which is nice, and I'm going to use my backspace, yep, to get out of there, and then it says battery, so perfect. And you might have heard the cursor uh, routing sensor vibrate a little bit. That let me know that I was in that menu, so I wanted to demonstrate another way of getting in. So. Let's go ahead and do another next thumb key. And this is the um, stopwatch. So we'll go ahead and open that up just to show you it. It's very simple. So in order to open it again, I'm gonna use the enter key. And now on my braille display, I see a bunch of zeros with a bunch of um, hyphens between them or dashes between them or however they, they decide to call it. So if I wanna start, the stopwatch I'm going to use a space and I'm going to move my fingers over here and as I can feel the seconds just go by six eight nine you know all that stuff so now if I want to stop it let me set, try to stop it at 20 seconds 18 19 20 so yeah until then I hit it at 20 seconds and, and now the stopwatch says um, 20 point actually it was like 20.3 seconds which is really kind of funny so um i started and stopped it the way i wanted and if i want to clear it um and start over i can restart it actually if i want with another space bar and then restop it again but if i want to clear it i'm going to do a space with the letter c to clear and again now our our stopwatch is totally clear so I'm going to actually escape this menu. I want to get out of it because really there's only so much you can do in a stopwatch menu. So what I did is I did an up arrow. That is another way to exit a menu. I could have done a backspace um, had I chosen, but I did not choose to do so. So now I'm back in that menu item and I'm going to move past it now with the next, um, next thumb key. And this menu is um, the connections menu and what that means is I can very quickly and easily switch between two devices that are both connected to 
the Braille Trail at the same time. So if I was connected to the Braille Trail and using it, and um, I had a friend who also had it um, um, as a connection option on their phone, it would be very easy to just enter this menu and rather than having me or my friend go in and into the settings menu and disconnect that device manually, you can just go into the settings menu on the Braille Trail Reader and do it. Not that you can't do the other way also, but it's kind of a nice option. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and skip past that because I haven't connected this device to anything, so there's really not anything to show you there. And it's also relatively common sense that you would just press and enter on there and, and pick which one you wanted. Now I'm in the settings. This is the settings menu. If I went past it, I'm going to do that just to show you quick. Um, we go past the settings and we, we find the about menu, but suppose I wanted to change some settings and I just kind of moseyed on past it. I can do that previous thumb key here and here are my settings. This settings area has several options in it and we're going to look at those now. So to enter the settings menu, I'm going to do an enter. And the first thing in the settings um, menu is the uh, auto power off. Um, you can set the time that the unit is inactive before the unit automatically just shuts itself off. Um, it can be any time between um, three minutes and 60 minutes in, um, in, in, in increments. And you can also turn it so off so it does not ever automatically power off. Not probably the best advice because if it gets turned on in your backpack by accident and you're going somewhere and you get there, your display will probably be dead uh, if it's been a while. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter that menu just to show you. So I'm gonna hit enter. And right now there's a full cell and next to the full cell it is indicated a 10. So that's telling me that, that um, it's 10 minutes before it auto powers off. So if I wanna change that um, from 10 minutes to something else, in this particular menu, you're going to use the outer thumb keys to navigate. So I'm gonna use my next one. So then it's 15 minutes for auto shut off. Uh, we've got 20 minutes. So maybe I wanna set it for 20 minutes. If that's what I want, spacebar. And what'll happen is there will be a full cell next to that 20, uh, 20 minutes, and it'll be like in the first cell of the display. So that indicates what has been chosen. So if I want to continue to cycle through my options, just, you know, because I'm curious, I can do my, um, my right and left joystick. So 30 minutes, my other option, 45, 60 and here's off and we'll and if we keep going we start right at the minute again or beginning again three minutes five minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes and this is where my full cell is so i'm going to go ahead and escape from here or get out of the menu from here so i'm going to hit um backspace so get out of there and now it says auto power off again so i'm right back into that menu so I want to go to the next one, and the next menu is uh, the sleep timer. So the sleep timer and the auto shut off, oops, and I just hit the camera, sorry. Um, the difference between the sleep timer and the auto power off is that when your unit goes to sleep, it isn't actually off. You can quickly wake it up by pressing one of the buttons to kind of wake it up and let them know you're ready. But it has the added advantage of, of uh, saving you some power without actually making you restart. So again, we're gonna enter that menu. I'm just gonna do an enter. And it says, um, oh look, the first thing that comes up is five minutes and I can see my full cell that's marking that five minutes. So if I wanna change it, you know, again, I'm gonna use my previous and next thumb keys, uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Now, if I set it above 20 minutes, that's not going to do anything because your unit will have turned off before it had a chance to go to sleep. So that's kind of why they put the auto shut off in front of the 
the sleep option, I really might have gone the other way, but really six to one, half a dozen to the other. So I'm going to go, um, I actually don't want to change this setting because it's already set at five minutes. That's fine. So we're going to do a back and here we go. And we're right back to sleep. And then the next, the next option is sound. Now the sound can be, uh, turned on or off. So if you set it to on, the unit will provide sound cues. And if you set it to off, it will not. Pretty common sense stuff. In fact, so I'm just gonna go in there and show you what the toggle looks like. Um, on is selected. I can use my next thumb key to turn it off. On, off, kind of like karate kid, wax on, wax off, no. Okay, backspace to get out of that menu because I don't necessarily wanna change it. And here we are, sound again. So I'm gonna do my next thumb key. And now I am at, ooh, this is funny. We are at the vibration. So here's the thing we need to know about the cursor uh, routing and cursor sensor and vibration. This unit, this particular setting will turn the vibration on or off. And it works the same as the setting, um, the sound setting above. So if you entered it, you could toggle between on and off. It is on now and we I really want it to be. Um, so we're just gonna leave that alone. The next setting is cursor sensor. This controls the sensitivity of the active touch cursor. So you can turn it off so that the touch cursors do not work if you find that you don't like the touch cursor or that you cut automatically touch it or whatever. Um, one would be the most sensitive. So if you even like bumped a cursor with your finger, um, it would, it would uh, activate. Or if you put it on five, which is the least sensitive. So you really kind of have to get it in there. So I'm not sure what this is set on. So what I'm going to do, okay, is enter it here. And currently it's set at a three, which pretty standard, I would imagine the middle, middle of the road. But I would recommend this as a setting you might want to fool around with because if you are unfamiliar with the way touch cursors feel or work, it might be to your benefit to kind of start out at a three and then decide whether you're activating it accidentally too much or if you're purposefully activating it and it doesn't, um, activate. This is the setting you're going to want to change for that. So I'm just going to get out of here because I don't want to mess with it. So backspace and we're still on our cursor sensor. Um, the next setting is, oops, I'm going to have to hit the next button because that helps, is cursor vibration. And this is um, a control on whether there should be any vibration feedback at all. So the, free, the previous one was sort of the opposite, you interacting with the cursor and how you control that. This one is how the cursor interacts with you, which sounds kind of weird, but it, that's because it is. So you can set it off um, to turn it off, which means that you're not going to get any vibration at all, or um, a one to five. And again, that vibration is going to be the uh, slightest vibration and the five is going to be the strongest vibration. This is another set of settings you are going to want to play with, especially if, again, touch cursors are a new thing and that vibration kind of puts you off a little bit. It did take me a little bit to get used to it. I'm not gonna lie, it really did. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter because I don't remember what it's set on. Oh, of course it's set on three because I have three and then the full cell to the left of it is what it's set on. And again, I don't wanna mess with it. I'm fine with the way it's vibrating now. So I'm going to hit a, a escape or a backspace to get out of here. Now we're back to cursor vibe. And this is, uh, we'll go to the next one here. Uh, this is the Braille cursor blink rate. I have no idea what I have it set on. Uh, right now I have it 
on, off. So it looks like it's a toggle. I can turn it on or off. I was thinking maybe I could choose the way the, the menu is, uh, or the instruction manual is written. It sounds like you can pick whether the seven or eight will be your um, cursor or whether it will be, what do you call it? It'll be uh, night, uh, one, or, one or the other of those or both. It just kind of sounds like that. So I'm glad I opened it. So I'm gonna do a backspace. I'm just gonna leave it on. It, it's, it'll blink for me when I get into a note. All right, so now we're back there. I'm gonna do a next thumb key. This is computer braille. Um, this All this is, it is allows the user to choose the eight dot computer braille table. When you are open, when you're typing in computer braille, it's letting you know, um, which table you're using in the computer braille. It's it's not turning it on or off, it's not changing your translation, nothing like that. So I'm gonna open it. And marked is, um, oh, English, English US. Yeah, we like English US, that's good. We really don't need to change it. Um, but if I hit my next thumb key and I wanted a different computer braille, um, this is English UK. So we're just gonna do a backspace because I don't want to press. I don't want to mess with it. We did not make any changes. So now we're going to go to the next menu item here. Uh, that is literary braille. So this allows you to set to select the six dot literary braille table of the um, languages and, and types. So we're just going to open that up because that might be a little bit more useful for us. Um, there, I just activated it with a touch sensor. We have English UEB selected here. Um, again, I'm gonna use my next thumb key and now this is English. It really messes, my, messes me up that the menus are in uncontracted braille. Um, English US. So this would be like eBay, the e EBA old um, way of doing braille. Um, I shouldn't call it old way, I should call it the previous um, adaptation of what BANA had had in uh, in the US. So, and then there's here's English UK. And we're just going to go back to make sure UEB is selected. English UEB, there it is. And we're going to go back that I do not need to mess with. Okay, now we're back in to, uh, into the menu and it says literary braille. The next item will be default braille. This allows the user to pick when you open a note, do you want to enter, um, do you want it to be in literary braille or do you want to have it be in computer braille? So let's open that up. Right now, the uh, the full cell is next to literary braille. And I could bring it up computer braille is the next option. And see, it's just like sort of a toggle. You can switch between the two and pick which one you want. We want literary. Um, if we were um, maybe not as proficient in braille, um, we might choose computer braille. Um, if if uh, that might be something that your um, rehab counselor or TVI or um, whoever, would work with you on. But for the most part, if you're using a braille display, for the most part, you are gonna be probably relatively braille literate. So I'm gonna hit that backspace, I want out of here. And we're still in the default braille menu item, so I'm gonna go forward another one. This next menu item is language. Uh, this allows you to set, select the language that your, um, your uh, unit is going to display braille and we could enter that and take a look. Um, it's going to be set to English because uh, really there's no other option as far as me. But I just went ahead and act activated it and there is a full cell next to the word English. So if I wanted to change it, maybe, you know, I'm learning French, I don't know. Um, this one's French, then you, oh, I don't know. I don't know what that is. But anyway, so we're just gonna do backspace because we're not gonna mess with that at all. 
Um, so now we're going to go to the next menu item. The next menu item is one-handed mode. Um, this allows you, it's just a toggle to turn it on or off. It allows a user to uh, just use one hand to operate the unit, um, as the title suggests. If you are a one-handed Braille user, for some reason if you've had a stroke or um, there's been an accident, where you know you can't or you I don't know broke your hand and it's in a cast I don't know but if that's the case this is where you would turn that on and off let's go ahead next the next option is uh, the new line indicator um, that means that and this again is a toggle on or off um, a new line indicator is a full cell um, indication in between uh, items that are on different lines. So for example, if you were doing a grocery list and you just, you know, where you're writing down the list, you know, milk, new line, bread, new line, pickles, I don't know. Um, so if you go back and go to read that, it might say bread, full cell, milk, full cell, or whatever the order your list was in, rather than making you go to a new line each time. That's a little bit more efficient. And especially since we only have 14 cells, to work with, it kind of helps move things along just a little bit. So you can turn that new line indicator on or off. And again, experiment with it. If you're not a fan of it, then turn it off and see what you think. And you know, it's, it's relatively easy to go back in and turn it on and off. Uh, the next menu item is the about. So this is the last item in the settings. So if I press my next thumb key again, I'm gonna go back back around to the auto power off. Now, if I want to get back out of here, I can do a couple of things. I can do that cord with the letter M, or no, I'm sorry, the cord with the full cell to go back to the main menu, which I will do that right now. And here it is, it, I can tell it's the clock all right, the, the wrong clock <laughs> is gonna make me nuts until I think it was something. So um, I can just continue to go past here, past, let's see, connectivity, here's settings. And instead of hitting enter on settings to go in, I'm just gonna go past it. So the last thing is about. So this displays the reader's firmware version. It also uh, gives you the serial number. Um, and again, if we hit that next key, we go right back around to the top where that clock is again. Um, so I hope this was helpful for you. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. As, um, as usual, my contact information is uh, in the previous video or it is in print on the uh, um, introduction area. But again, if you need it, my name is Amy Snow and I work at the Wisconsin Center for the Blind and Visually Impaired. A good Google search will get you to that web, web page and to my email address from there. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, good luck to you, and I will see you next time.